Greetings, my name is Michelle Kelsey and I'm going to be taking you through the IBM Predictive Customer Intelligence and Engagement Solution complete with a demonstration of these of these products. The first thing I wanted to point out is that we're actually focused on a number of key verticals and those specifically are banking and insurance, retail, as well as telco or telecom. And from a use case perspective, certainly the things that we've heard, right offer, right time, right place, maximizing revenue, if we look at retail, sentiment analysis. And then from a business perspective, a business benefit, being able to optimize these offers and looking at customer lifetime value, the ability to cross-sell, upsell, being able to uh, look at satisfaction, customer satisfaction and loyalty, and then in the telco space, looking at customer churn and improving customer service. You're going to be seeing a number of these in the demonstration uh, in the next few minutes. So why are we here? Why do I care? So we often talk about acquiring, growing, and retaining, or acquire, retain, and grow. But what we also want to look at is, and what we're bringing to the table, is that ability to personalize what we often will hear as one-to-one -one marketing and being able to build that relationship with our customers. And obviously what that gives us is increasing customer lifetime value. So this is, I, I don't know about you guys, but this is what I look for with the companies that I do business with is I want them to be able to find me, to be able to ask me questions, advise me, know me, grow with me, excite me, uh, as well as compare me to some of my peers, the classic Amazon or Netflix. Uh, if you like this book or this movie, you'll like that book. Trade with me, educate me, uh, as well as alert and let me make choices. And then obviously security is certainly very important. So when we talk about this solution, the IBM Predictive Customer Intelligence and Engagement, and yes, it says banking, but again, keep in mind that it's for a number of different verticals. We certainly want to be able to see more, right? Growing that knowledge of our customers, to know more and anticipate those customer needs and increase the likelihood that the offers will be accepted and they're the right offers, and then do, do more. And this is critical, is being able to take action at the point, at the right point in the in the life cycle. So, from a architecture architecture perspective, we can pull data from a myriad or a number of different data sources. So, looking at interaction data, you'll see this in the demo: email, chat, call centers, web web clicking, uh, going to our website, Twitter, social media, um, attitudinal data. For example, uh, opinions or preferences, descriptive data, different characteristics, demographic type data, as well as behavioral data, transactions, what exactly are you guys or our customers doing. And then the, the brain, if you will, of this solution is this predictive customer insight or intelligence. And there's a number of models, templates that come with it, including things like doing churn or customer lifetime value, product affinity, cross-sell, upsell. And then from a marketing perspective, there are a number of components that are included uh, to do things like campaigns or messages or email, digital marketing, and obviously in real time. And then from a channels perspective, we can look at lots of different ways we interact with our customers. So via the web, via mobile, via social media. And again, you're going to be seeing a number of these in the demonstration. So what's distinctive or different? What are we bringing to the table? advanced analytics, um, optimizing those decisions at the point of impact. That's very important. A model is only as good as if you take action on it. And then cross-channel um, cross channel and actionable insights, so multiple channels, you'll see that. And then big data, certainly being able to scale is obviously very important and we often will talk about the 360 degree customer view. And then a flexible deployment strategy, we often will will uh, talk with our customers about crawl, walk, and run. So let's set the stage in terms of the demo. We'll dive right in. The uh, these are live products that you're going to be seeing here in a second. These are again a combination of predictive customer intelligence as well as our experience one. Um, the predictive customer intelligence, a number of SPSS components. We try not to talk about product names, but a lot of times customers are curious. And then uh, from a scenario perspective, this is the this is what you're going to see, is a customer engages. First of all, Natalie will be tweeting about a beach home she's interested in. 
Then she engages with her bank, a fictitious bank, to look at financing. The bank actually uses predictive customer intelligence to figure out that a jumbo mortgage is the right offer as well as what the right rate is for her. And then the bank also interacts with her in terms of the call center as well as via her mobile phone. And then the customer, Natalie in this case, goes ahead and accepts that offer and then starts the process as far as uh, apply, applying for that loan. So let's meet Natalie. So Natalie is 38 years old. She lives in Texas. She's a high value customer of this fictitious uh, bank called Open Financial Network. She's a social influencer and she has an annual income of 155K. So let's flip over into the live demo. The first thing that you'll see is Natalie is, on, is uh, active on Twitter. So she's looking at her account and she decides to tweet that she, uh, I think, I found the perfect beach house. And we'll tweet that. And once that happens, we're actually capturing that information. All right. And so Natalie then, after she tweets that, she decides to go look. She logs into her bank and decides to look at possible loan options. So here we've taken her to, again, our, their fictitious bank called Open Financial Network. Natalie logs in. And the first thing that she sees is some information about her uh, checking and her MasterCard, et cetera. And she wants, she's interested in buying a home, that dream home, the beach house. So here what we see on the bottom are some fixed rate mortgages. We can look at adjustable rate mortgages and then jumbo mortgages. And Natalie's a savvy buyer and so she knows that she's interested in a jumbo mortgage. So she chooses that option. And then she can click on the calculator to put in a purchase price and get an idea of what kind of a rate she might expect. So she's typed that in and uh, it's a 15 year term. And now we've given her her first offer. So here you can see we have 3.775 for a 15 year fixed. So Natalie thinks to herself that's pretty good. So she's going to go down to the bottom and actually have the call center uh, give her a call. So now I've switched hats and now I'm the call center uh, agent for the uh, for Open Financial Network. And the first thing that I see is some information about Natalie. So customer profiles, some transaction information. And then I've also been given a number of different offers that I can give to Natalie over the phone. So what you'll see is, is there's a MasterCard offer, a savings account, and, a, and that jumbo fixed rate. I've also been given a, a score for each of these in terms of what the most likely or the best offer is for her. Now notice that this is without predictive customer intelligence turned it's off right now so we're going to turn that on and what we see is now at the bottom we now have some additional information but most importantly what we have is that the jumbo fixed rate mortgage has now popped to the top the score has gone up significantly to 83 to a score of 83 and we have some additional information about why that's the case because we've incorporated some additional information with predictive customer intelligence. So the first thing we see is Natalie's a good customer. Her retention priority is high. The product that we're recommending is a jumbo mortgage. The products that she's been browsing on our website in the last 24 hours is that jumbo mortgage. And then we've scored, created a number of scores automatically for her in real time. It can also be in batch, but her propensity score, which is the likelihood for her to accept an offer, is quite high because we pulled in the, the digital media, the website, as well as the Twitter. It's 83%. Customer lifetime value is 70%. The, um, the attrition, as far as her leaving us, is 10%, so that's good. She's happy with us. And then her influencer score is 50%. 50 so during the conversation, the call center agent would say, hey, you know, Natalie, uh, we do have some great rates on the jumbo fixed mortgage. And, um, you know, are you interested in that? So Natalie says, you know, I'd like to think about it. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit the clock that she's, she's considering that. And you'll notice down in the bottom, but we've captured the fact in real time that she's deferred that offer. So the next step is Natalie's had a day or two to think about it and she's at home and she's thinking about that beach house and what we see is she's now on her phone and she 
is logging into again that the, her uh, Open Financial Network. And when we click here, we, she signs in. And here again, she has some information about her account. And look, look at the bottom. So now we've given her an offer with respect to that vacation home. So it says buying vacation home, jumbo loan, and here we've sweetened the deal a little bit um, to 3.245. And we didn't just make that number up. It's the reason that it's we've sweetened the deal is because she, of all those scores that you saw, she's a good customer, and we want to make sure that, that we capture this business. So she can go ahead at this point from her phone and get the offer details. We've also personalized this. So we've put in here, again, that same rate. And we've included some information about perfect for buying a, a vacation home. And now Natalie can decide, yes, I've, you know, I think this is a good deal and I want to get started. So she'll click check. And now, congratulations, uh, we, we can go ahead and, and uh, start the application process. So what you've seen is kind of an end-to-end -end where Natalie went ahead and started with Twitter and, and was tweeting about a, a perfect beach home. Then she went to the website and was looking at jumbo mortgages. And then the next piece was where she was looking at the, uh, the call center agent, had an interaction with them, and then the, the mobile offer you saw just a second ago. So being able to, again, see more about her, uh, know more about her, and then do more at the point of... Uh, the, at the right point in the uh, in the interaction. So my guess is you're probably wondering how we did this, what's under the hood. So here we have a, a architecture architectural diagram of kind of what you what you experienced there in the demo. The first piece is all of the different data sources that we were pulling into this demonstration. Um, the next piece, um, again, are, is the brain, if you will, where we've incorporated a number of different models, lifetime value, um, some scoring, right, cross sell, up sell, and then all of those different ways that we interacted with Natalie. The next piece was we incorporated digital analytics. Uh, if you're familiar with core metrics, that's what's under the hood here, but we can certainly integrate with other products, uh, for example, Adobe's products. And here we see visits, we see unique visitors, page views, um, et cetera. So we've pulled that in. And then from a campaign perspective, we are looking, and again, we try, it's sometimes people, if you've seen Unica, that's Unica. We also incorporate Silverpop. Um, here was with PCI turned off. So here we had low income, high income, middle income, where we were doing some segmentation. And then when we turned the PCI component on, what we had was where we scored those offers and actually made sure we presented the best offer for Natalie and then personalized that experience. And more importantly, we're able to capture the fact that response and then send that as a, as a follow-up to her mobile, mobile device. From a predictive customer intelligence perspective, data is typically not perfect, so we did some uh, data processing under the hood. So we transformed and aggregate, aggre um, aggregated some of that information. And then we went ahead and we pulled in digital analytics, the web information, to pull in that information to do our scores. Social media, you saw that as far as Twitter. You could also pull in Facebook. And then category affinity. Typically this is often thought of as market basket analysis in a retail um, scenario, but this is looking at the different categories and products. So you were the jumbo loans, for example, in this in the demonstration. And then rec doing a recommendation, pull grabbing information from all of those different um, items, the propensity, the lifetime value that you saw, and making a recommendation so it's the right offer at the right time, at the right price. And then from a front-end perspective, we can also look at from a dashboard. What is that campaign performance and ROI, as well as the number of offers made and accepted? This is showing it from a market perspective, but up in the upper left, we can also look at this from, say, a product perspective. So you've seen a, a number of different uh, ways that we help our customers, and certainly uh, there's a number of success stories, one of which is First Tennessee Bank. And just similar to what we were looking at in the demonstration, they wanted that granular understanding of their customers' banking needs, and they wanted to make sure that they could improve those offers and do cross-sell, up-sell. And from a, a product perspective, these are some of the products. 
Um, the great news is that IBM, we've bundled um, all of these into the, the solution that we were just talking about, Predictive Customer Intelligence and Experience One. And then from a benefits perspective, we were able to improve their, their offer response rate by 3.1% and then 600% ROI through better campaign efficiency, being able to do things in real time and automating and pulling in all of those, the data from all those different channels and then being able to interact with, their, with her, with our customers in a variety of different ways. And then also they were able to achieve a 20% reduction in mailing costs. So how do we get started? Certainly there's a, a path to transformation. We talked about crawl and then walk and run in the effort to see more about our customers, know more and do more. So the first step is to identify those high value opportunities. People will often talk about low hanging fruit. And then look at the architecture and what makes sense for your business. Proving the fact that we can add value, scaling certainly is important, and then transforming um, the, uh, the business step by step. So uh, to summarize, what you've seen in this short presentation and, and most more importantly in the demonstration is that ability to optimize the offers and, and cross-sell, upsell, make sure it's the best offer. So seeing more, growing that knowledge of our customer, knowing more, anticipating those needs, and then doing more and taking action. So we look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and uh, have a great day. Take care.